Did the Maple Leafs have the best offseason in the Atlantic Division? And why isn't there any urgency on the Mitch Marner contract dispute? We'll discuss all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sport stops sporting like you want them to. This summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a booster or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. What's up, Dave? How you feeling on a Friday? Not bad. Feeling pretty good. We're getting closer to the X, C, and E opening in Toronto. Oh, oh time. As someone who lives downtown, I, I, I don't, I don't get too excited because that just oh. means it's going to be crazy congestion on the Lakeshore and King Street, and it's just going to be a absolute. Oh yeah. Oh, be a gong show. Absolute gong show, especially with the construction going on everywhere. Oh, uh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. But, yeah, the C&E is getting closer, which means training camps are uh, are getting close. We're just over, what, probably five, six weeks away from the start of camp. So things are starting to inch into the right direction. Uh, interestingly enough, so we, we're going to talk about a couple of things here today. We, it's, it's Friday, so we've got a Friday five-pack. And we're going to be talking about the five uh, top five Maple Leafs contracts to prioritize this upcoming season. So that's what we're going to do for our Friday five pack. And that's stemming off of this report of, uh, it sounds like Leon dry and on the Oilers have begun some extension talks. And that kind of got me thinking, Dave, um, what does that, what does that mean? I guess for like the Maple Leafs, like things have been pretty silent on that front when it comes to not only Mitch Marner, but also John Tavares. Like last summer, we take a look at, the two big UFAs that were upcoming in Mitch Marner or in, in William Melander and in Austin Matthews, like there was an urgency to get those deals done. Um, doesn't seem to be the case so much uh, this off season. It, it feels like people, uh, and I don't even mean like management, even the fan base seems like they've got much more of a willingness to uh, kind of wait and see on these guys. Huh? It really does. Cause I just think everyone's waiting for the hammer to drop on, the big change that we're all kind of waiting for and locking down the core won't lead to that change. Right. So if you get all these contracts done for our management, be like, Oh man, we got the deals all done. But then it's also like, all right, so we're going to be keeping this going for how much longer now. Right. So I mean, people just sort of just like at this rate, why rush it when you might be in a wait and see if this is even worth continuing? Yeah, I mean, I I, I see that obviously. That's that's mm-hmm. the route that they're going through. But you are you of the belief that both of these guys may not be here next year? Like, if I had to give you, uh, if you had to put a percentage on it of both of these players walking as UFAs, or you know, both of them not being here, whether they walk or whether they're traded or whatever happens, like what percentage would you put on it that Marner and Tavares are not part of this Leafs team after this season are not both. Like I, I think one of them, I do think one of them, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think both obviously return. Uh, I don't think that's possible. And when we talk about, you know, needing a change, one of them will have to go, but one of them, I think will probably end up staying. And, and, And you would think that there would be, a little bit more urgency to figure out who that is uh, and, and maybe start working out a deal so that you got a bit more clarity on that situation. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm thinking it's like, yeah, like a 10, 20% chance. We see them both, both Marner and Tavares back Mm. at this rate, just based on. Yeah. Yeah. The cap's going up, but that also means more money for them to make, right? For for I mean, Tavares won't be making wow. what he's making now, but like the Martyr Camp's not gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we'll, we'll take less. Well, no, Mar Mar's not taking taking any less than what Willie got. We know that's that's gonna end up being the case. But a comp combined though, like Marner and Tavares will take up less of the pie than what they have over the course of the last five, six years, though. Um, if if they do sign them back and bring them back together, like you Tavares isn't gonna garner that eleven million dollar contract like he did. Yeah. And I don't think Marner realistically is gonna get that big of a pay increase. Like he's he'll go from what, ten point nine to to eleven and a half, twelve million max, I would imagine. Uh in, in that range. Like that's not a giant leap. You know what I mean? In terms of it's not like William Nylander esque where I got, you know, millions of dollars extra added to that to that salary uh, or that annual average salary that goes against the cap. You're not going to have that situation with Mitch Marner and Tavares. That's that's going to decrease if you were to bring him back. But I'm with you. Like when I look at the percentage odds of both returning and this core four remaining long into the future, I I do think that we see one of those players um, kind of depart or or you know exit stage left, just not be part of this team any longer. Uh, and I. <sighs> Honestly, I, I I can't really put a pulse as to who uh, that player might be. Like, if John Tavares comes back at a cheap enough rate, I mean, it's it's very possible that the Maple Leafs like what he's done and love his leadership. He's the captain of this team. Mm. You know, maybe they, if he's willing to sign a cheap deal, you, you bring him back as a third line center. Maybe he shifts over to the wing, uh, and he could be a third line winger uh, on like a cheap deal. I, I could totally see that being the case if John Tavares wants to remain in toronto um but we'll see we'll see what ends up happening i i i just found it i don't know, i find it kind of curious like leon dry side on the oilers they start to begin those contract extensions and and in my back of my head i'm thinking i wonder if there's just been any any talk at all with marner or tavares's camp with the maple Leafs, and just it's been silent that there could be things happening in on the back end but it's been very eerily silent compared to you know last summer that's all yeah, it's it's going to get to that point in in training camp where Marner's not going to want to talk about it, but everyone's going to be talking about it. Yeah, honestly, so it's it's going to happen. We had a lot and, of fun. Uh, yeah, it should be interesting. He'll get snippy, and he'll demand. This is the last time I'm talking about it. You know, it's between my agent and the general manager, and I'm out of things. All right, whatever, Mitch. We'll we'll see what happens. Um. <laughs> Has your opinion changed though at all over the off season? Like I know you were pretty gung ho, and we both both were at times about like it, Marner's got to be the one to go. Like that's the significant change that needs to happen. Have you softened at all as the you know season has gotten closer or as we've gotten further from last year's debacle? Uh, have you softened at all? Has your opinion changed on Marner's future with the team? I wouldn't say so, just because when you look at how the team needs to start playing in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Like my, the only thing I will say is I will give Craig Rube the chance to see what he can do with Mitch Marner. Yeah. This, like, like at this point, like since they didn't make the move, they're clearly banking on that. So might as well give them the year to see what they can do with that. And if it's not match made in heaven, like one's here longer, one signed to a deal past this year, and one's sticking around. I don't think Mitch Martin is going to be the reason why Craig Ruby doesn't last past a year in Toronto. Right, right. That I and mean, you know what? That's probably the right answer. I, I, the right answer is probably no. Nothing's changed until we see the change on the ice, the off yeah. ice. Uh, you know, it's it's always been about what's happening on the ice ultimately. So I guess that makes sense. We'll 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 see if uh, if things change in his game. Um, but again, it's, it's not the regular season. That's ever the issue. So like we, we've been fooled by Marner in the regular season. It's, it, we, we got to wait till April again. And, and by then the trade deadline has passed and he's very close to being able to walk as a free agent. It's a fine line that the Maple Leafs find themselves in this year when it comes to, to Mitch Marner. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I'm not the general manager, but that's, that's a difficult decision on the hands of, uh, of Brad true living. And uh, and Brendan Shanahan, I guess, probably will have a say in, in what happens there as well. Um, all right. On the other side, let's get to our Friday five pack because it's kind of in the vein of these two players we're talking about. Because we kind of want to take a look at the five contracts the Leafs 
should be prioritizing <laughs> next season. There's five uh, free agents that the Maple Leafs have next year. How should they be prioritizing them? Free agents slash RFAs. We'll get to that list on the other side. And also, quite the bombshell statement from Brucey e. Boudreaux on the NHL Network in regarding the Maple Leafs hot offseason, according to him. We'll tell you about that uh, in a little bit as well. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're printing rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the places you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into the Locked On at Leafs podcast. Mike DeCefano, Dave Morissuti, as we are every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here throughout the month of August. And then we go back to five days a week once training camp kicks off in about mid-September. So make sure that you are subscribed to the Locked On Leafs podcast wherever you get your podcasts from, audio-wise, and then also on YouTube where you can watch uh, and stream the video format of the podcast. Uh, hit the little notification bell as well so you know exactly when new episodes drop here uh for the locked on leafs podcast all right so we've been doing this uh every friday for the last few weeks here it's our friday five pack and uh we basically are we do a power ranking every friday and this week we're gonna look at we're gonna look at some free agents that the maple leafs will have to make decisions on next year now doesn't mean they're all ufas there are also rfas that we have to include in this list but it's top five leafs contracts to prioritize this coming season so uh without further ado dave give me your top five list we want to start top to bottom or bottom to top you decide brother you decide uh let's go with, let's start with bottom top like the thing is like the least don't have a lot of deals like mm-hmm. upcoming contracts coming to an end here so i also kind of looked ahead past this year too if like any players are eligible for an extension july 1st of next year okay. and s- still still nothing really <laughs> it you cheated. doesn't you cheated. No, you cheated i tried to cheat it didn't work so we're just going to stick with the upcoming expiring contract so just because he's there on the list i went with pontus homework at number five mm-hmm. because i did too to be fair he's like kind of the he's like, a throw in <laughs> Well, he's a body. He's an NHL player, yeah. right? He's turned into to to an NHL player, and he does have a deal that it's expiring. Um, and, and it's arbitration one... eligible as well. Yes, he is, but it's not like one that you're. There's no. a high. I'm level not sweating. I'm like, oh my god, what's going to happen in the Pontus Holmberg hearing? Right, right. Like, is, is when if the Pontus Holmberg era ends this year, I don't think people are going to be too worked up about it. Uh, so he, he's a guy who I also had chilling at number five on my list. Uh, now I think this is where we start to get into the nitty gritty because there's kind of, to me at least, on my list, I had four guys who uh, who who I think. There are going to be serious conversations with what the numbers look like, if you want to bring them back, uh, and and so on and so forth. Uh, who do you have at number four, Dave? Uh, number four, I have Jake McCabe. Mm, okay. Okay. Might be a little low for some people, but I just think that, you know, with the additions of Tanev and the additions of Ekman Larson, the Leafs are more insulated. Like, we were looking... Just last year, the Leafs have no defensemen. <laughs> like, literally, we're like, what the heck are they going to do? Mm-hmm. Now it looks a little more, okay, you got hit, you got Ekman Larson, you got Tanev, Riley, Lilgren signed, uh, Benoit is signed. So, like, there's it, the Leafs are more insulated. Like, losing a Jake McCabe hurts, but, like, I'm not saying he's there. They have to go hard at a Jake McCabe extension. Like, I think 
I don't even think Jake McCabe is going to want to sign an extension. I think this is like a big UFA year for him to say, I might be able to go out and get a bigger contract. 30, 30 right now. There's a chance there for one more big payday if Jake McCabe wants it. Interesting. Interesting take there, Dave. I'll give you my thoughts on that a little bit higher on my list. At number four, though, I had the captain. I got John Tavares on my list here. I, 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 you know, when it comes to, to, to Tavares, I just don't think that this is necessarily something that they have to prioritize. Um, mm. Like it, it's, it's either there's going to be a contract, there's going to be a framework in place and it's sign it or not. It'll be very similar to Steven Stamkos. I think when he was with the, the Tampa Bay lightning, the lightning had a number and they said, if you're willing to take this number, we will bring you back. If not, sorry, pal, go see what else you can get. Stamkos decided to go to Nashville, got a nice little payday. I could see a similar situation unfolding with, with John Tavares, where it's not necessarily you know a priority to make sure they get him signed, but if it makes sense, I think they would probably sign him, uh, but it's got to make sense for both sides. So for me, in terms of there being, I guess, a priority or there being an urgency, there's one number that works, and it'll just be, all right, John, let us know when or if you're ready to sign that. So for that reason, I, I, I put him at number four, just not, not a lot of urgency uh, in in that one, in my opinion, uh, number three for you was John Tavares. <laughs> I think like like I he's not top of my list. Like I I understand that he is your captain, but I feel like John Tavares is at the stage of his career. I don't think he'll want to like make another move, right? Like he seems to be pretty nest like nestled into Toronto, established his roots with his family and things, I in the least feel confident that they can get that deal done, but they're going to wait. Again, they're going to wait and see how he responds this year to, again, a new coach, new systems, and where his game is kind of projecting, right? So the Leafs, I, I don't see any reason why the Leafs need to go and get a deal done unless, like, halfway through the year, you feel like you found good common ground between the two sides. I don't, just don't think John Tavares wants to be worrying about a contract during the year. He'll yeah. he'll he'll do the same good old. He's he's good at the boring. I am my angel hand. Like he's good at that. He he. It does. I don't think it phases him, like it might other players to have to constantly talk about it. He's just a robot when he's talking to the media anyway. So <laughs> exactly, I'm not exactly. concerned about that. Uh, my third Matthew Nice for me is is coming at number three now again he's he's an rfa so like the Mm -hmm. the leafs have his rights and and i don't believe he's got arbitration either so um there's not a lot of leverage there but he's a guy you want to get locked in right he's a guy that the least neat look at as a a core piece of the future a big time secondary piece of this offense and they're going to want to make sure that he is part of this team moving forward uh and and getting that contract done now i I don't know if it's a long-term short-term medium term However they get it done, I do think that he should be someone that the Leafs are looking to prioritize. And, uh, I mean, maybe try and get this thing done sooner rather than later. I, I am a firm believer that Matthew Nye is going to have a quote-unquote breakout season. I, I I love what Matthew Nye did uh, in the playoffs. He, he was great, I think, towards the end of the season. He looked like a player that certainly belongs in a top six, so... If you can, you know, sign him to a four or five year deal and and get a little bit of a discount uh, because he hasn't had that breakout yet, you know, might be cheaper to get him locked in now as opposed to waiting till uh, till next season. So I think there should be quite a bit of uh, prioritizing to get this Matthew Nye's contract signed, sealed and delivered to make him a Maple Leaf uh, in in the long term. That's why I got him at number two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he is a player that is a big part of your future, right? You've got a core that's a bit older. It's the younger guys like him that you really have to make sure that you've established that other core. Am I like you got your core for? And you got that other like younger core that's the secondary. Uh, yeah, the secondary. Yeah, your secondary yeah. supporting core is kind of how I I kind of picture it. Don't give, don't make this a situation where he is having such a big year and then every single article is going to be like, how are these going to be able to afford Matthew Nice? Oh, how every, much is every, it going to cost? 
every time he scores a goal, it's gonna be like, oh, that's another hundred thousand on the contract. Oh, there's another hundred thousand on the contract. Like that's what it's good. Like when Bobby McMahon started to go off, it was like, oh, yep. there's another you know fifty grand on the contract. Oh, Bobby Man's contract demands just went up a little bit after that one. It's gonna be the same thing with Matthew Nye. So if the Leafs can get that locked in uh, as as soon as possible and extend him. Uh, similarly to the way they did with Joseph uh, Wool a couple of years ago before he really, you know, took off. And then all of a sudden that became uh, a very, very nice contract for the Maple Leafs. Uh, now, now he's a little more established than Wool was at the time, obviously, uh, but still something that the, the Maple Leafs should try and look into uh, getting done sooner rather than later. Uh, this is where Jake McCabe came in on my list at number two. Um, look, I, I think he's a very important piece of this team. Like, I, I don't care that you brought in OEL. I don't care that you brought in Chris Tanev. I still think that Jake McCabe is an extremely important piece. We know how important the blue line is, and you don't want to be taken away from that. Like, this is someone who, you know, now that you have Tanev, I guess he's no longer like your number one shutdown guy, but that's what Jake McCabe has been. And he's probably going to play on that number two shutdown pair. Um, and he's someone who can play both sides. He can play the puck a little bit. He can jump up into the. I like Jake McCabe. I've always had a, a you know, I've always liked Jake McCabe, and I would like for him to be a Maple Leaf long term. I think that uh, he's enjoyed himself. Uh, remember when he was originally, I believe, in Buffalo? I want to say, um, and even in Chicago, I think he had to wave to come to Toronto, and there was the mm -hmm. thought that there wasn't any other Canadian team that he was willing to wave to come to. I think he had a modified no-trade list, and right. every Canadian team except Toronto was on that list. So for him to wave to come here obviously means that he has an appreciation for this franchise, and uh, I, I mean, the fan base has treated him well. I, I, I think that Jake McCabe should be a Maple Leaf, and they should try to get him locked into a nice four or five year deal, keep him here long term, be a nice staple piece uh, in behind Chris Tanev as he ages. I mean, Tanev's not young. We know this. McCabe still probably has a few years left of uh, of, of quality play. So uh, I think Jake McCabe to me is a little higher on the list than you had him. I have him as the second uh, contract, the second player who I'd be trying to prioritize this upcoming season. Yeah. My, my only thing is I, the reason why the Leafs might want to prioritize it. I just don't know if Jake McCabe is going to want to prioritize that opportunity to go and hit the market unless the Leafs give him a but, deal that he can't refuse. Right. Like well, there's going to be the money goal. there. There's going to be money there this off season for the Maple yeah. Leafs to spend. Like a, it's going to go up and B if mm -hmm. one of Marner or Tavares don't come back, it's a lot of money that the Maple Leafs have to, you know, put elsewhere. And McCabe could be a beneficiary of that. Yeah, he could. He could very well. And I also I haven't taken a, a big a, a look right now of what the defense market's like for next year, because there could be a potential to go out and maybe improve or upgrade. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where I have to also kind of think about what Jake McCabe is. He has been very good. I've had no real complaints. Like he didn't have his best series against Florida, right? Two years ago, but he's also a player that has been counted on time and time again. So I, I, I think it's it's a priority, but I don't know how much the Leafs view that as a priority down the road. We'll see how how the season kind of rolls out. It's kind of how I picture it. Let's see if I can pull up uh, to see what we have for like top free agents. Trying to see if I can pull up a, a top free agents at 2025 list and see if anybody else is. Uh, well, Aaron Eckblad actually is a guy who's got a contract coming up. I think Shea Steve. Theodore is another one. Yeah, so there there's gonna be some there's gonna be some players out there that definitely are gonna hit the market. Um, Neil Pionk, uh, Ryan Lindgren, McCabe, Jacob Chikrin is gonna be hitting the market. You mentioned Theodore Provorov, Gavrikov. So that's a lot to compete with, though, for Jake McCabe. Yes, like he's true. he's he's not on the young side of that group, and he's probably closer to the bottom on that power ranking as opposed to the top. So if you're Jake McCabe and you're in a situation where people like you in Toronto, that the team likes you, the fan base likes you, maybe you stick around and you don't go see what's out there. Grass isn't always greener on the other side, uh, which means there's one player left for both of us at the top. Uh, I would imagine that Mitch Marner is your number one Leafs contract that uh, the team should be prioritizing this upcoming season. 
and I think the reason why you prioritize it is you 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 kind of want to see where where he lies, right? What yeah. what exactly is Mitch Marner looking for? Um, and you need to prioritize whether that's the contract you even want to do. And I think that's the that is the key that I wanted to to stress here. Like because we have him at number one, doesn't necessarily mean that it's is something that the Maple mm-hmm. Leafs have to do. But I think prioritizing the contract here allows them to understand, okay, we, we're we going to do this or we're not going to do this, right? It gives them clarity on the Mitch Marner situation, which to me has a massive domino effect on how else they go throughout next offseason. So once they figure out Mitch Marner, if they lock him up to a contract, okay, that money is spoken for. We no longer need to worry about that. But if it doesn't and he ends up walking, now that's a big, massive, you know, question mark you go into the season you go past the deadline is marner going to be here are they going to figure it out throughout the off season uh are they going to figure out before july 1 of next year well, it's, it, it'll it'll be a bit of a stressful situation so i think if you find out okay this is what the options are uh it, it'll make things a lot easier for the maple leafs and and brad true living going forward so not necessarily that he's number one gotta gotta bring him back but you gotta find out what exactly the contract looks like, and then you make the decision if you want to bring him back or not. But that's why you prioritize Mitch Marner to find out what exactly he, him, and his camp are looking for. Yeah, and again, I, I just think that's why you just you give your if Mitch Marner is not willing to talk about a deal or wants to take this time for the year. All right, <laughs> then you better. You're, it's on Mitch to perform and to make yeah. the Leafs regret not pushing to get a contract done. Right? It, it happened with Nylander. Willie, they they did. There wasn't an urgency to get that deal done. Leafs ended up paying more at, in the end of it. Right? Like it came out to work for the player. Let's see if Marner, mm-hmm. if the same, uh, what's the word? Look for it. The same process strategy works for Marner. Yeah. So we'll find out. Uh, so that's the Friday five pack top five leaf contracts and prioritized this season. I had Mitch Marner, Jake McCabe, Matthew Nyes, John Tavares, and Pontus Holmberg in that order. Dave had Mitch Marner, Matthew Nyes, John Tavares, Jake McCabe, and then Pontus Holmberg. So we had the same five players, just a little different in uh, in the middle there. Uh, Connor Dewar is another guy who they're going to have to figure out a contract for next year. He'll be another RFA with arbitration eligibility. And Dennis Hildeby was actually one that I considered. He's a sneaky one, but technically yeah. he is a pending RFA after this season. So he's another kind of honorable mention, I suppose, that the Maple Leafs will have to figure out uh, if he's going to be part of this team moving forward forward uh or part of the the big club i suppose which i'd imagine he will uh all right we'll take a break when we come back let's get into these uh these comments from bruce brucey boudreau on the nhl network pumping the tires of the maple leafs off season we'll tell you what he said on the other side it's mike DeStefano, dave morris studio you're listening to the locked on leafs podcast part of the locked on podcast network it's your team every day Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sports and like I want them to. FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I got to do is open up the app, dream up any bets I'm in the mood, and bam. This summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a booster or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. If you go and take a look on the app, they now have the futures for the NHL. Do you think the Maple Leafs are a 100-point team? You can go bet yes or no over on the FanDuel app. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On at Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti with you on a Friday. Hopefully everyone has a fantastic weekend upcoming. Got any weekend plans, Dave? Got anything going on? You want to uh, have the Argo game tonight? Argo game this on Friday, brother's birthday this weekend. Oh, busy, busy weekend for you, Dave. Yeah, busy, busy, busier than usual. Yeah, I might, I might keep it low key. I've had a couple busy ones. Might keep a little low key this weekend. We'll see. Although things usually tend to pop up at uh, at some point. Uh, all right. So this quote was kind of floating around the last couple of days on uh, on X 
formerly known as Twitter. And it was of Bruce Boudreaux, Gabby, um, former head coach in the NHL, former Maple Leaf. And, uh, well, let's be honest, Maple Leaf super fan, Bruce Boudreaux. He's on the NHL network and did come out. And he, he, he believes that the Maple Leafs had the most impressive offseason in the Atlantic division. Dave, on a scale of 1 to 10, how truthful do you think that statement is? I'll give it a 7. Okay, explain. Like, when you look at the other Atlantic Division teams, other than the Leafs, who really made a big push to improve their team, right? Like, did Tampa get better? I don't uh, think so. Trade a no. circuit, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, I think you lateral made- kind of lateral moves for them. Yeah, you go out and you make the big splash, get the forward, but that was never really Tampa's issue. Well, they also lost Dampos. So, yeah, another (laughs) lateral move there, too. That's what I mean. It was just like lateral (laughs) moves for for Tampa all around. So, like, Tampa, no. Like, Detroit, they made made some moves, but I don't think they're better. Montreal. They didn't do anything. Buffalo didn't do it. The one team, or maybe the two teams, I think that probably are the only two that stand up to to what Toronto did. Like Tana, big piece. Oliver Ekman Larson, we'll see. Stolars, we'll see. So, like, realistically, and he also team, mentioned the Craig Berube. He's very high on that move as well. That is true. He he did mention the coach, and and maybe that is what gives Toronto the the edge here, and kind of what tips the scales, I suppose. But like they lost Berube, or they lost Bertuzzi, they lost Edmondson, they lost Labushkin. So it's not as though you know they didn't lose any pieces from last year either. The two teams that I think somewhat can hold a candle to what Toronto did, and maybe maybe did have a better one, we could have that conversation. I think Ottawa did a good job of of adding to their group. Didn't lose a whole lot. Right, they 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 brought in Nick Jensen. They desperately needed a, a defensively reliable right shot defenseman. That's exactly what Nick Jensen is and has been his entire career. And they shored up the goaltending position, so they think at least with Linus Olmark. And they brought in David Perron uh, up front, so they they you know added a defenseman, they added a goaltender, and they added a forward. So they hit all three of uh, of those positions. And you know they they really only lost Jacob Chikrin. Uh, who did not have a good season for them last year anyways. It was like a dash, like 30 or something for the Ottawa Senators. So, you know, they they believe, and I've, I've spoken with Ross Levitan, our friend over at Locked On Senators, they believe that they are a better team. And they will should be able to compete for a wild card spot. So the Ottawa Senators, I think, can be put into that conversation and then the Boston Bruins, I mean, yes, they they trade away Olmark, but they replace him with Corpusallo, who isn't as good. But if you put him in front, in you know, behind the Boston defense, we don't know what that could look like. Yeah. Eh? Olmark didn't look good in Buffalo either, and then he got in front of this defense and turned into a Vesna goaltender. So maybe Corpusallo could give you just as productive minutes as Linus Olmark did. You know, Jeremy Swayman's going to, and he's going to play a decent bulk of games. But they also added Elias Petter, or Elias Lindholm and Nikita Zadorov. So I think Boston made some pretty big impact ads as well. I would say those three teams, um, he can I mean, maybe the coaching does tip the scale for Toronto, but I think those are the three teams I'd be looking at for most improved in the Atlantic division. Or yeah, and like any real ads either. So yeah, and like you're looking also like where the Leafs release were last year where things ended and what they did to put them in a better position this year right boston certainly did too like i I think those two additions while maybe they paid a little more than what people would have liked to made for those moves they still those are still looked as you know impact additions to their team and even ottawa so yeah those were the only two uh, like versus what the leafs did those are the only two teams i thought okay like those teams really made a push and and to really improve themselves. Other teams like Tampa, they made those lateral moves, but they also like they probably feel like we still were a playoff team, even though we had th- like things not go our way. So, yeah, I, I I can see why. I mean, Bruce is also the biggest least cheerleader, and we love that. Um, so I, I but I can see why he is excited about what happened here. Yeah, and, and both you and I are both excited. I, I, I do think the team is better. Uh, they're definitely different, but different in a good way, more balanced, uh, I believe. Both, you know, 
they added to their defensive depth with it, which they needed to do. Uh, and they added a little bit of size and grit, which we felt they also needed to do. So I do think that they're a little bit of a better team. Uh, I think it'll a team that'll translate more at the very least. And the coach, maybe the coach is that kind of thing that tips the scale here. Um, so yeah, maybe Brucey Boudreaux is right. Ultimately. Cause I know when I first heard the quote, I was like, okay, sure. Whatever. I mean, Brucey Boudreaux being a homer. But then when I went and I actually looked, you know, the the ads and subtractions throughout the division, Toronto's right up there in terms of, you know, the quality that they were able to to add versus what had left the door, uh, left out the door. They're right up there with everybody else. And and maybe the coach is really that uh that tipping point to give them the the W. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it all plays out though. That's why you play the games. You know, winning the off season doesn't necessarily get you anywhere. Um, so they'll have to go out and prove that they had the best off season by proving that they have a really good regular season and even better yet postseason, because that's ultimately what matters, especially in this market at this point in time. All right, buddy. Fun stuff. Good show. Uh, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more studio and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys on Monday. Enjoy the weekend, everybody, and keep it locked right here on the Locked On Leafs podcast.